So an actress, CRISPR, and a monkey walk into a lab, and this is the dissertation project that comes out. So think about this concept. Every cell in your body, and you have trillions of them, has the same genetic composition, same DNA. How then do cells with the same DNA know they're supposed to become an eye, a heart, or even a brain cell? It's a fascinating question. The answer to that question lies in epigenetics, which is a complex scientific field that studies specific changes that happen on DNA or the environment around DNA. Now take a look at the top left picture. Four different characters, all Cape Blanchett. Same person. The only difference between them are the makeup and the clothes that she's wearing. With the right makeup, you can become anybody. You can even be Bob Dylan. <laughs> in the same way, with the right epigenetic changes, a cell with the same DNA can have multiple identities. Now, I study a very important epigenetic factor that has been implicated in many diseases like cancers and HIV, development, and stem cell maintenance. So it's really important for us scientists to understand it and study it. And I take a twofold approach to do so. First one, I use a cool new tool called CRISPR, which some of you may have heard about. Now, CRISPR is an enzyme that cuts DNA at very specific places with remarkable precision. Once the cuts are made, then scientists like me can come in and introduce changes to the genetic sequence to manipulate it. And that's precisely what I've done. I've engineered changes so that I can inject them into live animals to understand more about the biological function. Second approach I take is something I call molecular photography. Now, how many people in the audience have a cell phone? Think about how easy it is for you to take a picture of something that is big and not moving. No biggie. Click a button. So easy, even a monkey can do it. That is an actual selfie taken by the monkey. But what if you're trying to take a picture of something that's moving crazy fast and is so tiny, you can't even see it with a microscope, like molecules? Now, that's hard. To see molecules, we get millions of them to stand still. And then we force them into a crystal. We shoot x-rays at them, and the x-rays scatter, and they produce this beautiful diffraction pattern, like the one on the, the picture at the bottom that amplifies the signal from all the packed molecules. So, that, along with mathematical equations and bioinformatics tools, gets us to a pretty picture like the one in the middle, which is the actual structure of the factor I solve. So I now know the position of every atom in that molecule. It's like, I'm a cop, they got GPS tracking on them, I know exactly where they are. So why is this important? You know, as much as people like to say it's scientists, we're not rebels without a cause. If you know what the structure of a molecule looks like at the atomic level, then you can understand more about its function and how it interacts with other molecules around it. You know what the pocket looks like in a molecule, you can design a drug to fit that pocket. So my research is providing you insights about how these factors work in stem cell maintenance, embryonic development, and human disease, which can help people in suffering. Thank you.